thank you, thank you, thank you. How's everybody tonight? Blessed, Blessed and thankful, I'm sure. Well, I'm just happy really to be on the tail end of uh, this evening. Uh, I recognize that um, the person who comes last is supposed to be first. And I also recognize that uh, the Colts game starts in 20 minutes. So <laughs> I'm trapped. <laughs> but um, I'm just grateful for the experience that I have had with Indiana Wesleyan, and particularly with the seminary, with the seminary um, administrators and faculty. But my greatest joy has been really uh, seeing these two classes uh, materialize. And uh, you heard a little bit about what, what they are about, but um, I just believe somehow that we're in the business of lifting our community. In Indianapolis, Indiana, if most of you know that we are being beset by a, a just violence on every night, violence on every corner, um, and we see this, we feel helpless about it. Part of it, of course, is systemic. It comes as a result of, I would say one thing for sure, that all of these fatherless boys, uh, if you looked at 10 people being arrested this past week, nine of them, possibly 10, had no father in the home. When I think about education, I, I think about lifting the community. And I've always encouraged pastors and clergy friends of mine to make sure that they get all that they can because it's important for the development of the community to have an educated clergy. And I really believe that. I don't believe that our salvation is based on it, but I'm now talking about elevation talking about lifting the community. And our community would change dramatically if we spent time under some of these professors that we have heard uh, this evening. And I've been very impressed with every one of them, haven't you? Yeah. 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 So, um, the, and, and, and the, other, the, the other piece is that, you know, a Christ-centered education. Mm -hmm. I am clear beyond a shadow of a doubt that the answer to our dilemma has nothing to do really with programs and nothing to do with grants. It has all to do with Jesus. And if you get Jesus in the heart of every child, and I mean saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, it becomes nearly impossible for them to put a gun in someone's face for them to really to do the things that you know that are, are basically uh, embarrassing to our whole community. Yeah. So I mean, what we really are failing at the point of, I think actually uh, taking the church outside of the walls. Mm -hmm. We expect those children to come into our church mm -hmm. and most of us uh, fear uh, taking time with people in the street, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the marketplace and et cetera, et cetera. And I think, um, George McLeod said, I simply argue that the cross be raised again in the marketplace mm -hmm. as well as the steeple of the church. Right. For, for Jesus was not really crucified between two candelabra on a communion table, <laughs> but he was crucified between two thieves yeah. uh, on a cross. Yeah. And that's what Christianity is really about. Yeah. The place where people talk smut and curse and the place where we don't like to go. Mm. This is how we're going to change the world. Mm. But because I'm, I'm, I'm last and because, um, well, uh, because they're just now starting my time. Um, <laughs> that, that was my introduction. <laughs> you know that whenever a preacher looks at his watch, it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but, but what I wanted to do tonight is to make sure that we certainly have had some powerful information and really have had some inspiration. One of the things I think the church is suffering from, and I think uh, Lenny 
Lucetti touched on it as others have. What we have done, I think, is traded celebration for consecration. I think the present day movement, whatever Dr. S, whatever those different categories are, I think what we've got now is people who think that the way you, 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 you impress God is that you, you make a lot of noise mm -hmm. and be sure to clap your hands yes. because God can't hear. <laughs> and what really needs to happen, it seems to me, is not really celebrations important, but it seems to me that our aim should be a change and transformed yes. heart yes. and soul. Yes. And I think it kind of speaks to what has been said tonight. What we're really after is changing the world one student at a time, but making sure that we have change agents who are changed. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just take, if I can just take <laughs> if I could just take 10 minutes to yes, take sir. one text and just see if we can't just, just, um, just look at the text for a, for a moment and see how it applies to us as we leave here. I don't want you to go without this because God gave it to me and I prayed about it and I asked God, give me something for these uh, pre-theologues, theologues, scholars, and wonderful students. There is a passage of scripture that the Lord dropped in my spirit for you tonight that um, I, I, I want to dismiss you, but I can't. Um, the 137th Psalm starts off, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but starts off about by the rivers of, of Babylon, there we sat down. And yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. And we said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Um, homiletically, this passage probably could be could 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 do say something like maybe um, first we have to remember where we came from mm -hmm. yeah. when we remember Zion. I, I'm just you know, and then we have to see that our captors need us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're asking for. They're begging for a song. They may be taunting and tantalizing and. And, 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 and picking at us, but, but really beneath all that, they are in need of our song. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Mm. And then the third thing I see in this text that I didn't really read is that, you know, that um, says, if, 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 goes on to say, if we forget thee, mm -hmm. may our right hand wither and our tongue cleave to the roof of our mouth. Always remember Jesus. So, 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 so here we go. Uh, remember Zion from where you came from. Everybody's got a story. I've heard it all, all tonight. Everybody's got a story. I wrote a book called Mama's Boy. That's my story. I, 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 you know, single parent grandmother raised me. Amen. I was... Mephibosheth, I was dropped, tossed, dropped on my head, crippled. And my grandmother picked me up and God did something with my life. 
I mean, that's my story. That's, that's, that's out, of, out of that, that's where everything else in me comes from. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every book I wrote, I wrote about children because I was one of those. So it was boys to men, mama's boy, the home alone syndrome. But, but homiletically, that's one thing, but you heard tonight that what people are hungry for and what I asked God to do for me, for you tonight, was please, those are three good points to preach. Mm -hmm. yes. But, but I, wanna, I, I wanna take you down just, just another path if I can. One could argue that, that, that if you lived in America for the last 50 years, or even less, you'd probably come to the conclusion that the land of our fathers and mothers has now become a strange land. There is so little familiar anymore. Things have just changed. And one could also argue that many of these changes have certainly not been for the good. I mean, there's been a slow slide down the slippery slopes of Sodom and Gomorrah. And there's been a dumbing, dumbing down of the mentality of America, morally and spiritually. You can't turn on the television without a hot mess. And the church is being, is being mocked. Sing us a song, and we get the preachers of L.A. Sing us a song, and we get the housewives of Atlanta. Sing us a song, and we get money thons and telethons and money thons and telethons. And, and here, here we are. Struggling, struggling captive. Yeah. And I wonder, even in, in, in the Philippines tonight, mm -hmm. how, how do you sing the Lord's song when a land, your own land, has become your enemy? Mm -hmm. Strange land, strange land. And so, and so it would seem that, 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 uh, that all that is familiar has faded, and so how shall we sing this land? The passage of scripture impacts me personally, and I'm just gonna share this with you because I need to. Have you ever, yeah. you ever, sharing in the pulpit and preaching, it cannot be without sharing you. It cannot just simply be an exercise in elocution or, or, or it, it has to be, people have to feel you. So, um, something happened to me here recently about uh, nine months ago that I thought that I could just handle. It's called retirement. <laughs> I spent 43 years in one church. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 43 years in one church with a routine. I did the same thing basically, basically. Every day I was trapped in a routine and I didn't know how trapped I really was. I, I, I retired not too soon. Now, let me just say this. I don't know how many of you are in churches, but one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to stay too long. Yep. <laughs> and the other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to leave too early. Yep. I think that I was right on time, but since then, I have felt like I'm in a strange land. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just be real with you? I have gone through some, some very difficult times, some difficult weeks, some difficult months. It, it looked easy, but it wasn't as easy as it looked. Yeah. And so here I am now, nine months afterwards. I'm still 
active, still engaged. I preach around the city and around the country, and I'm involved with uh, IWU, and I've made some new friends in there, but I found something that was so interesting, and I just share it with you because it's important. One of the things that helps me with people in particular, because all people are normal till you get to know them. Well. Uh, <laughs> one, 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 one thing I figured out about people is that you, you really have to lower your expectations. Raise your expectations for God. But you have to lower them for people because you forget that they're trapped in flesh walking as saved sinners or unsaved sinners. I'm saying this because I'm trying to get us to come off of being untouchable and, and we're real people. We hurt. We got issues. Sometimes your marriage becomes a strange land. Sometimes your ministry becomes a strange land. You, you, you're about to burn out, about to fall out, about to break down, and you don't know what to do. So then how, how do you sing? Well, my grandmother said that it has nothing to do with trouble. It's got, don't let your problems stop your praise. <laughs> She used to be on that ironing board. She'd be, you know, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, now, now listen. When the mockers require of you a song, and the opposition want a composition from you, you got to learn how to sing, anyhow, not for them, but for Him. Yeah. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah. So, 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 so here's, here's what I want to say, and then I'm, I'm, I'm through here, because I, I don't, you know, I already gave you an outline, y'all can preach a Sunday, you can do anything you want with it, but, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but, 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 but I, I, what, what, I'm, what, what I want to get to you is this. I, I have, I have a favorite, I have a favorite, um, well, let, let, let me put it this way. At this point in my life, it's very hard to disappoint me because I've already been terribly disappointed. It's really hard to hurt me because I've really been, I really been hurt. I, I mean, I look like it, but I, you know, I'm not supposed to look like it. Greater is he who's within me than he who's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, but when I go home, still have to struggle in the midnight hour yes, yes. with people who are deceitful and mm. yeah. dishonest. And, yeah. mm. and I might say this to every person in here, this is just for you as you walk through life. Be careful who you trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Because the devil was once an angel. Oh, no. oh, the devil. And I'm finding an interesting thing in post-pastoring. Mm. So what have I come to? My song is, I just want to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings want to be made conformable to him in his death. Mm -hmm. You know what the only thing excites me now is Jesus. Yes. You want to get me excited? That's what, you, that's what, what Jesus. Yes. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the afternoon, Jesus all night long. I woke up this morning and said, do you know that I really did not have to get up at all? But Glory. So singing this song has little to do with them, it has everything to do with him, although they need the song. The world needs our song. But let me, let me close with this narrative illustration from the pen and the mind and the heart of Lauren Isley. And it's called uh, Singers of Life. Please listen carefully because you'll see how what I'm reading is the metaphor, 
is the illustration. And you can, you can find this particular illustration online. It's, it's really, I won't do it justice because it needs to be read 10 times. He said, I have said that I, I saw a judgment upon life and that it was not passed by a human. I shall never see an episode like it again, even if I live to be a hundred. You may put it that I had come over a mountain, that I had slogged through fern and pine needles for half a long day, and that on the edge of the little glade with one long crooked branch extending across it, I had sat down to rest with my back against a stump. Through accident, I was concealed from the glade, although I could see into it perfectly. The sun was warm. And there, the murmurs of the forest life blurred softly away into my sleep. When I awoke dimly aware of some commotion and outcry in the clearing, the light was slanting down through the pines in such a way that the glade was lit like some vast cathedral. And there, on the extended branch, sat an enormous raven with a red and squirming, nestling in his beak. The sound that awoke me was the outraged cries of the nestling's parents, who flew helplessly in circles about the clearing. The sleek black monster was indifferent to them. He gulped, wetted his beak on the dead branch, and sat still. Up to that point, the little tragedy had followed the usual pattern. But suddenly, out of all that area of woodland, a soft sound of complaint began to rise. And to the glade fluttered small birds of a half dozen varieties drawn by the anguished outcries of the anguished parents. No one dared to attack the raven, but they cried there in some instinctive misery, the bereaved and the unbereaved, the glade filled with their soft rustling and their cries, they fluttered as though to point their wings at the murderer. There was a dim, intangible ethic he had violated that he knew. He was the bird of death. And he, the murderer, the black bird at the heart of life, sat there glistening in the common light Formidable, unmoving, unperturbed, untouchable. And then the sighing died. It was then I saw the judgment. It was the judgment of life against death. I will never see it again so forcefully. I will never hear it again in the notes so tragically prolonged. For in the midst of protest, they forgot about the violence. There in the clearing, the crystal note of a song sparrow lifted hesitantly in the hush. And finally, after painful fluttering, another took the song, then another, and then another, and then another, doubtfully at first, as though some evil thing were being slowly forgotten, till suddenly they took heart and sang with many throats, joyously, together as birds are known to sing. They sang because life is sweet and sunlight is beautiful. They sang under the brooding shadow of the raven. In simple truth, they had forgotten about the raven. For they were not the singers of death. They were the singers of life. And here we are with one life to give. How shall we sing the Lord's song in this strange land? I sing, 
because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me.